President Joe Biden has passed the 100 day milestone and a lot of folks are kind of stepping back and reflecting on everything that he's done and hasn't done thus far. I do have a video coming out on Saturday at 8 a.m. where I kind of give you my comprehensive breakdown. It's not an exhaustive list of every single good and negative thing that Joe Biden has done. Having said that, though, I do try to be really objective and um, go through a lot of the most significant things uh, that this administration has done. Having said that, though, putting aside my breakdown and my grading of Joe Biden's uh, performance thus far, members of Congress are also speaking out. And Republicans, of course, obviously hate every single thing that he's doing, even if it is in their interest and what they want, uh, because they're just hacks. But in theory, if somebody in Congress is going to be the most critical of Joe Biden, I would expect that to be the progressives. However, they don't actually seem that displeased with Joe Biden. And uh, actually, AOC, not necessarily in a leadership position, but widely viewed as the leader of the squad, at least, she actually uh, said that she believes that Joe Biden has done a great job. In fact, he's exceeded her expectations because she was expecting him to be a lot more conservative than he is in actuality. Take a look at what she had to say. One thing that I will say is that I do think that um, the Biden administration and President Biden has definitely exceeded expectations that progressives had. Uh, you know, I'll be frank, I think a lot of us expected a much more conservative administration. Um, and I think that his not only what has ultimately come out, but the active invitation and willingness and collaboration uh, with progressives in his first 100 days um, or almost 100 days uh, has been very impressive. And so while there are very, you know, there are areas where there are just plain areas of disagreement, um, I think that the, the actual conduct of the administration has absolutely been in good faith, but not just in good faith, but active incorporation of progressive legislation and also for those of us individually. You know, I can at least say that um, there has been a lot of openness and willingness and flexibility in incorporating uh, many of our goals, requests, demands, etc. Okay, that's going to be a hard disagree from me, AOC. Um, listen, I think that if I'm going to be charitable here, if your expectations are already really low, like if your expectations are below the floor, then any one good thing that that individual does that's pleasantly surprising, you could see that as, oh, wow, I didn't expect this. You know, I am surprised. Therefore, my expectations have been uh, exceeded. But even by that standard, has Joe Biden exceeded my expectations just personally? No, he's met my expectations because my expectations were there'd be a couple of good things, but a lot of really bad and harmful things, namely as it relates to foreign policy and immigration. So I don't like that she's saying this because here's the thing. If you want to give Joe Biden credit and try to cultivate goodwill with this administration so that way he hears you out and he factors you into the equation when it comes to legislation. I understand that from a strategic perspective, but what AOC did here is actually incredibly harmful because now Joe Biden, he's going to see this. He's going to think, oh, great. Progressives are uh, satisfied. I exceeded their expectations. I didn't just meet their expectations. I exceeded their expectations. So therefore, um, they're appeased. I can uh, not listen to what they have to say because they're already satisfied. We're 100 days in and this group who I expected to give me the most trouble is already satisfied. Wow, that's that's fantastic. And AOC, you know, she basically speaks for the progressives. So, um, yeah, that's not what we want. We want Joe Biden to take away. Now, it is the case that I don't believe we should come off as petulant children who are unreasonable, unwilling to ever give Joe Biden credit for anything that he does. I mean, sure, applaud him. Give him credit where it's due when he does good things, but don't censor yourself. Don't go out of your way to compliment him, especially if those compliments aren't warranted. Has Joe Biden done good things? Yes, he has done good things. I think he's handled the COVID-19 pandemic far better than Donald Trump. But at the same time, there's a lot of things in this country right now that need to be fixed. And to say that is an oversimplification because... There's a crisis right now when it comes to healthcare. Uh, we are facing climate catastrophe. So I'm sorry, just like having your low expectations exceeded, 
that's not any reason to be excited um, or give him credit for that. I'm sorry. It's just that's not the case. Um, now, as much as the uh, mainstream media tries to pretend as if they didn't hear the more radical things that AOC says, they definitely heard this. And they've been asking other lawmakers about what AOC said. And thankfully, Nina Turner had a much better response. She basically said, I mean, you can give Joe Biden credit for the good things that he does. But of course, we should have the courage to ask for more. But uh, on uh, CNN, the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, Pramila Jayapal, was asked to comment on AOC's remarks. And she not only agreed with AOC, but she took it a step further. And she gave him a grade of an A. Um, one of your progressive, uh, your fellow progressives in the House, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, says that he's exceeded her expectations and expectations for progressives. Do you agree? I do. Uh, you know, I think that this has been a really interesting time for us to see how the progressive movement at large, all the progressive voters, young voters, voters of color that came out and turned out for the president in November, helping us to win the White House, the Senate and the House uh, and the pandemic and the way in which it has just um, really sh shined such a bright light on all the in inequalities that have existed. I think President Biden has risen to the moment and I really do give him an A in what he's done so far. It's been bold, it's been progressive, it's been what the country needs. He hasn't shied away from it, he has leaned into it and we're hoping that the same continues to happen as we go through the process to pass the Jobs and Families Plan. I mean, that said, I know you haven't been completely on board with all of his plans and you've expressed some disappointment, the refugee cap, for instance. And in terms of his public polling, it's about how he's handling immigration, that he gets some of his lowest marks. So what do you need to hear from him tonight? Well, on immigration, I have spoken with the White House directly about this. They are going to fix the refugee cap issue. Um, you know, I... I think it was a big mistake. I've told them that. I said it publicly. I said it privately. But they're going to fix it. Um, on immigration, the president has, you know, he, he's sort of gone back and forth. He released a very strong day one immigration bill, and we really applaud him for that. It's a great vision coming from the top. But if we are going to be successful, Democrats cannot do what Democrats and Republicans have done for too long, which is, you know, use immigrants as a political football and run away from the issue or cave in to people who are using immigrants as a political football. So I want to hear from him that he is deeply committed to getting this done and that he's going to lean in to the incredible um, you know, promise that immigrants have, and I as an immigrant member of Congress, of course, feel very strongly that we contribute so much and we want to be recognized for that contribution and for the values that America holds so dear. They are so grounded in welcoming immigrants. Pramila Jayapal is the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. This is supposed to be the loudest opposition within the Democratic Party to conservative leadership. And I've got to read back the quote. I think President Biden has risen to the moment, and I really do give him an A in what he's done so far. It's been bold. It's been progressive. It's been what the country needs. This is borderline parody. Um, I don't like to grade or rate things on a scale from 1 to 10, A through F, but if I had to grade Joe Biden, I would give him an F. A D minus to be charitable. And the reason why I give him an F is not to, you know, uh, detract from the positive things that he's done, his positive handling of COVID-19. But, you know, if you are grading a paper, for example, and you score 55 percent, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you got every single question on that quiz wrong. You got some questions right. You did good in some areas. But ultimately, you still failed overall because... You didn't grasp the material enough. You didn't do what was needed to do to pass that test. So I would like to know what criteria Pramila Jayapal uses to grade Joe Biden, because if the standards are this low, then imagine what Bernie Sanders uh, would have been graded as. Would he have gotten like an A++++? Would our heads all collectively exploded if he said the words Medicare for all on a national stage? I mean, listen, you can acknowledge that Joe Biden at his State of the Union, he adopted the rhetoric 
of Bernie Sanders. He said healthcare is a right. But having said that, though, I don't necessarily care what he says. I care what he does. And to say that he's met the mo- he's risen to the moment, he still doesn't support Medicare for all in the middle of a pandemic. And it's worse than that, actually. He moved away from a public option, and a public option is trash, right? It's going to be overburdened and underfunded. Republicans are going to point to its inevitable failure as proof that government-run healthcare doesn't work. But I mean, it's still better than the status quo currently, but he isn't even proposing a public option. I mean, he's seemingly moved away from it. Not a people about a public option. But you say he's risen to the moment? Are, are we serious? Are, are we just overly naive? Representative Jayapal, you are the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. You set the tone for the rest of progressives in Congress. You saying this is a signal to everyone in Congress, members of the squad, progressives, to unilaterally disarm, let your guard down because Joe Biden is based. Joe Biden has risen to the moment. He's bold, he's progressive, he's exactly what this country needs. <coughs> and even the CNN host, it seems like she disagrees with you because she noted correctly so that Joe Biden has a high approval rating, but where he gets the lowest marks is when it comes to immigration. And Pramila Jayapal correctly identified his unwillingness to uh, lift the refugee cap. Now he's postponed it. He's gotten a lot of pushback for that. But that's not the only issue. Pramila, the reason why he's getting low scores when it comes to immigration is because what he's been doing has been comparable to Trump. There are children in cages. Are you just pretending like that's not happening? So it's deeply frustrating because what this is doing is you're poisoning the well for future progressives. There's a lot of new progressives that are right now launching their campaigns and they're trying to encourage people to donate, to, uh, you know, canvas for them, sign up and volunteer for them. And the takeaway when progressives see things like this, see you just capitulate and die like that in a in hundred days, they're going to think, well, why am I going to give up my hard earned dollars to these new progressives running if they're going to just get elected and immediately roll over and die, not even try to fight for a second? Like, do you understand? We need to see a spark. We have to see some signs of life within progressive lawmakers. But it's just they, they won't fight. They, they're not doing it. And I know that the most popular response that I'll see to disappointment with the squad of people who are really genuinely demoralized, and I don't blame them for this, is, uh, well, you know, this this proves it. Uh, you just, I can't vote for anyone who's running for Congress as a Democrat. Except even if you were able to elect someone from a third party, a socialist or a green party, that would be really difficult to pull off in the first place. But even if that were the case, I mean, if you're an independent in Congress, you still have to caucus with the Democrats. I said this in my last video about the squad. Uh, you, you can't caucus with the Republicans. You have to caucus with the Democratic Party and work with leadership. So the same institutional factors that seem to not necessarily co-opt, but silence members of the squad or, you know, uh, bully them into obedience, for lack of a better word, that's going to apply to anyone else. And if you don't believe me, look at Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is not a member of the Democratic Party. He's been an independent for uh, forever. And uh, you can see he's overly deferential to Joe Biden. Is it because they're friends? I don't know. But it's the institution itself that makes it very difficult. So I've said this once, I'll say it again. The key ingredient is that um, we can't just keep electing folks and expecting them on their own accord to do the right thing because there's there's just too much pressure in Congress and they just they don't have the courage to fight, to put it frank. They're they're too afraid to, to fight. They don't have spines. They're, they're, they're either clueless or spineless. Uh, either way, them just being there isn't enough. So the, there needs to be a groundswell of pressure from the bottom. It has to be a bottom-up approach. We have to pressure them to pressure Joe Biden. We have to make demands. We have to fight. And it's tough. You know, it's hard to recommend grassroots activism and direct action in the middle of a pandemic. But that really is the missing ingredient here. And I don't necessarily blame people for getting demoralized here because think about how far we are from actually achieving anything that's truly transformative. So on one hand, Joe Biden is a conservative Democrat. He could speak the language of progressives as much as he wants. He could sound like Bernie Sanders on the State of the Union, uh, during the State of the Union address, rather. Uh, but I don't care what you say. I care what you do. Talk is cheap, but actions 
are what actually make the difference. So we have progressives who need to pressure Joe Biden to do better, but they won't. And then even if they were successfully able to pressure Joe Biden to do better, that still doesn't necessarily mean that Joe Biden has the spine to stand up to conservatives within his own party. I mean, he needs to put pressure on Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin to kill the filibuster. Otherwise, nothing you want is going to get accomplished. Whatever you're able to do, I mean, good luck getting 60 votes for it, right? And people cite the uh, the COVID relief package as like this huge achievement, and it was. It, it was truly beneficial, right? But the stimulus checks alone isn't enough. Even Donald Trump passed stimulus checks. So we have to expect the squad to pressure Joe Biden. And then, even if they're successful there, Joe Biden has to pressure Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema to do the correct thing. And I think that Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema actually are aligned with Joe Biden, but they're a convenient cover for Joe Biden so that way if things don't get accomplished that he doesn't actually want to get accomplished, he could just say, well, look, I tried to kill the filibuster, but I have members of my own party that don't want to do that. And I mean, this goes back to what AOC said. She made a comment about, I think the conduct of the administration has been in good faith. Has it though? Because he's patting you on the head and listening to you. I mean, these are social techniques that uh, are effective, but if you're a member of Congress, you should take into account the fact that, you know, Joe Biden is doing his job to make you feel like you're listened to, but that doesn't actually mean that he's taking into account what you want. I mean, the squad, uh, progressive members uh, of, uh, uh, of Congress, they've been legislatively irrelevant. Anything that they want is not getting put into any bills. And anything that they boast about is what, you know, just random rank and file Democrats also support. So is that really something that you can claim credit for? It's just, it's really frustrating and they have to turn it around. Like trying to kiss up to Joe Biden, I think that sure, you can argue strategically, maybe there's some value in that, but it hasn't paid off. You kissing his ass, rolling over and dying to leadership, it hasn't paid off. It hasn't been beneficial. And if you're trying to somehow make it so that way you're playing uh, 4D chess and you're using reverse psychology, you're trying to make it seem like Joe Biden is a good guy, so Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema seem like the bad guys, I mean, whatever strategy you have, it's not working. And that's even if we assume that you have a strategy, because, I mean, when I hear Cori Bush go on cable news and say, Ayanna Presley told me that my vote is my own, I can't help but deduce, okay, so they literally are just, like, occupying the seats right now. They're not fighting. So you have to do better. You have to do better with peace and love. You have to actually fight. Because guess what? You have a two-year window. You have to assume that Democrats are going to lose at least one chamber of Congress in the 2022 midterm elections. So everything that you're unable to accomplish now will soon be politically impossible come 2022. So if you think it's difficult now, just wait. So that's why I say, I mean... Are we going to see a single achievement squarely out of, you know, congressional progressives? Are they going to put up anything? Uh, I'll tell you, not if they continue on this current trajectory. They have to turn it around. They have to be courageous and they have to be indivisible in Congress, stick together and actually fight, actually make demands and actually threaten to withhold their votes from key legislative initiatives if they don't get what they want. It's exactly what Joe Manchin and conservative Democrats do, and they get what they want. So it's time that progressives do the same and flex their muscles. But, uh, I mean, things like this from AOC and Pramila Jayapal, this ain't it, chief. Do better.